Greetings, fellow interloper. I'm Taylor, your host and galaxy guide. Welcome to episode one of what I like to call Space Camp for Noobs. As you can see, this thumbnail has a special cyan outline as well as an episode number in the top left corner. With this being episode one, you can expect that we'll be going over the absolute basics of the game. We're taking a very basic tour of how this game functions and what you need to do in order to stay alive and get off the initial planet you find yourself on. The first episode is totally devoted to those who are extremely new to the game and are looking for a solid foundation to build on. In the following days and weeks, I'll be releasing more of these videos in a series that can be found in the Space Camp playlist here at Whiskey Barrel Gaming. And of course, if you just happen to scan over my videos, you won't be able to miss that cyan outline letting you know that it's a Space Camp video for the newer No Man's Sky player. So let's jump in. For the purposes of this series, we're going to be playing on normal mode with a brand new save, of course. This is an all-around good mode to start off with. It's not too difficult for a new player, but just enough challenge in the early game. Every game starts off with you having crash landed on a random planet with a hostile environment. These environments can come in a few varieties. Here it looks like we're on a cold planet, but other options would be a scorching planet, toxic, or radioactive. Right off the bat, you can see we have a few things on our HUD, or heads up display. So let's do a quick rundown on what we're looking at here. In the top left is our shield meter, along with some bonuses below that. When you take damage, your shield is obviously the first to go, but you know, it will recharge automatically after 30 seconds, so long as you're not taking any further damage. Down in the lower left corner is your hazard protection. This starts off at 25% and it's slowly falling. As we'll find out shortly, you can recharge your hazard protection either with sodium, which is kind of what the game wants you to do, or you could actually craft ion batteries. So as you can imagine, this will demand priority pretty much over everything else. We'll get back to this in a second. Below our hazard protection is the life support meter. One thing I do want to mention is when you're playing in normal mode, if you die, not a big deal. You'll go through a quick reload process and when you return, you just need to look for a grave marker icon at the site of your death. Once you locate this marker, you interact with it and you get all your stuff back. And you also have some technology that could be broken if it's installed, so make sure and double check all that. So don't stress out too much when you're playing in normal mode. Below your health meter is the planet name, followed by three atmosphere readings. Depending on what your environment is, the one that poses the greatest risk will be displayed most prominently. And in this case, since we are on a frozen planet, the temperature is minus 75.3 Fahrenheit, or to the rest of the civilized world, it's minus 60 Celsius. So the game does walk you through what you need to do, but it can be a little overwhelming at first. The first message tells you to recharge your hazard protection with sodium. And in order to find sodium, you should perform a scan. So when you attempt to scan using the suggested control, now whatever you're playing on, in this case it's N on the left stick for console players, or pressing C for keyboard and mouse PC players, you discover that your scanner has been damaged. To fix it, you must obtain 75 ferrite dust. Fortunately, ferrite dust is extremely common and easily harvested by small to medium-sized rocks scattered about. You'll be using your multi-tool for this, and as the name suggests, the tool provides multiple uses, such as a mining laser, a terrain manipulator, and a variety of weapons you can equip. You can see which one is currently equipped up in the top right corner of the screen, which is automatically the mining laser because it is the only one you have at the moment. When you move your cursor on top of an object, if it's mineable, it'll show you what that is made of as far as elements goes. Now when you mine it, those elements go automatically into your inventory. The mining system is fairly intuitive. If you mine plants and trees and so forth, you'll get carbon. And rocks, if you mine the larger ones, you'll get pure ferrite. And smaller ones almost always have ferrite dust, which is what we're looking for to repair our scanner. Now, other things that are pretty prevalent on pretty much any planet you're on are little blue crystals known as dihydrogen. You'll definitely want to mine these because we'll use these to craft into other things. We're going to go through the crafting system here in a second. 
And it's not at all uncommon to encounter a really big object that requires an advanced mining laser. We don't have that yet, but we will get to it. As you mine your ferrite dust, you can see a tally in the bottom right corner, and it gives you a signal when you've got enough. So now we can access our inventory screen. And here you'll notice it's got three main sections, one for the multi-tool, exosuit, and starship. Now since we're fixing our multi-tool, that's the one we want to look for right now. So just click on the scanner, and then you click on whatever's flashing. It will apply our ferrite dust and repair the scanner. Now we make a scan. As you can see, we have new icons that pop up. The red ones are for oxygen, the blue for dihydrogen crystals, and the yellow for sodium, which is what we really need right now to repair our hazard protection. Now that we've found some sodium, we'll take a look at our quick menu. This is a menu that can be accessed by pushing down on the D-pad on console, or X on keyboard. So once you have the quick menu open, we're going to focus on the one area that has the little battery icon, and that's to recharge your equipment. And as you can see, we can either recharge our mining laser, our life support, or our hazard protection. And since we're talking about hazard protection, this is the one we're going to select. And with any of these, there's usually a couple options that you can use to recharge. In this case, we can use sodium, we can use sodium nitrate, or we can use an ion battery, which we just recently got from a random container laying around. All right, so now we're going to go back into our inventories and take a look specifically at the exosuit section, which has three areas, general, technology, and cargo. The spots that have gears on them are open, and everything else is available to be opened up, but hasn't been yet, and we'll definitely go over that in the next episode. If we take a closer look at our general, you can see that we have some technology, such as our jetpack and our life support, as well as raw materials like ferrite dust, carbon, and sodium. When you store things in the general, you can either store technology as well as raw materials. The technology tab, on the other hand, will only store technology. And our third section, cargo, will store everything but technology, and each spot actually can store double what the general section does. So if you have something that can really pile up and take up space, it's best to put it in cargo. Now that you have the lay of the land as far as what goes where, you can kind of free up some space in general by moving your technology, uh, such as jetpack for instance. We'll move that into technology section. And we'll then move life support over into technology. And lastly, our hazard protection, we can also move over into technology. When you move your cursor over an open square, you get two choices. One is install technology, and another is craft product. Now, you can see that under install technology, we do have an option to install something. So since it is technology, we'll just move over to the technology tab and install this. So as you can see, we've installed it, but it's not functional. We're short a little bit of oxygen, so we're gonna need to do a little resource hunting in order to get this up and running. So now if we jump over to the multi-tool and hover over an empty square, you can see we actually have three pieces of technology we can install. Right now we want to focus on the analysis visor. So when we click on this, we see that we need carbon nanotubes to install it. And carbon nanotubes is fortunately one of the blueprints we already have. And while we're here, we'll install the bolt caster, which is our standard issue weapon that you start with. Not only does it need three carbon nanotubes, you can see it also needs 100 chromatic metal. And at this point, you probably have no idea what chromatic metal is. That's where I would definitely recommend checking out your guide, going into raw elements, and then chromatic metal to see how you can obtain it. So to go back to carbon nanotubes to install our analysis visor, we just need, well, carbon. So this can be found easily enough just by any plants or trees around. Now that we have enough carbon, we'll just go in and craft a product, in this case, carbon nanotubes. We're gonna make four, because if you remember, we need three for the bolt caster, and we need one for the analysis visor. So now that we have our four carbon nanotubes constructed, we can apply one to the analysis visor, and that's all we really need for that. And then we can apply the other three to the bolt caster. Now, the bolt caster won't be fully operational yet, because we still need chromatic metal. But if we take a look at this chromatic metal here after we've moved our cursor over it, you can see that it's a processed metal crafted in a refiner from stellar metals such as copper, cadmium, emerald, and indium. 
Now, these may not mean anything to you, but they will here in a second. Now that we have our analysis visor installed, remember that before when we moved our cursor over an object, we could see what it was made of. But sometimes, as you can see here, we've got carbon as a primary, and yet we have question marks for the secondary. So to enter analysis mode, we just hit left trigger on the console or F on the keyboard. So this will enable analysis view. Once you're in the view, you want to perform a scan. So to perform a scan, you'll use your right trigger or your left mouse button. So when we perform a scan, it usually takes about five seconds or so. And afterwards, you can see that you are awarded with credits. And any credits when you're starting off really helps, so make sure and scan as much as you can. And in the next episode, we're going to be going through technology upgrades. Once you do this, you'll be able to make a lot more money scanning things. And as you can see, not only do we have a few extra credits in our pocket, our secondary element has been identified. In this case, it's Mordite. So when we get done mining, we'll not only get the carbon, we'll also get a little Mordite. So remember to make that scan, because not only will you miss out on some money if you don't, you'll also miss out on getting some of those secondary elements as well. So next up, we're going to look at crafting products. So to craft something, you must first have its blueprint. Now, we start with eight different blueprints, as you can see here, and they're all darkened. When they're darkened, it means you have the blueprint, but you don't have the necessary uh, raw materials to craft them. Next up, we're going to take a look at the Discoveries Options menu. Now, this has six different choices as far as tabs go. Right here, you can see we have the log, which has our current mission. Right now, we just have one primary mission because we just started. From here, you can go to the guide. If you're lost or have questions about literally anything in the game, it's going to be in this guide. There's just, frankly, a ton of information about getting around, discoveries, construction. You can see all of the available categories on the left. Next, you have the options page. Now, this is fairly simple, but when you go to general, for instance, you can adjust music volume, sound effects, uh, you can turn your HUD on and off, and if you're in the States like me, and the pretty much the only place in the world where we use Fahrenheit, you can switch that temperature unit as well. Next, we'll slide over to the Discoveries tab, where you have an opportunity to rename a planet if you so wish, if you're first to discover it, and it also gives you a list of all the flora, fauna, and minerals you've discovered. That's a simple explanation, but there is definitely a lot more to dive into that we'll get to later. Now when we move over to the catalog, this is where you get a robust amount of raw material information. So if, for instance, you need to know how to craft something, if it has a recipe, it'll be on this page here. But remember, you're going to need the blueprint as well as having all the raw materials to craft something. And when you're on this page, keep in mind, if you see a little wrench and screwdriver symbol in the bottom right corner of the element, that means that you have the blueprint for that particular product. Definitely take a look at the rest of this menu and the other tabs as well within this menu. Early in the game, if you're ever unsure on what to do next, just take a look down in the bottom right corner. It looks like we need to reach the marked signal, so just follow that red symbol and you'll be squared away. Just make sure and keep an eye on your hazard protection, as well as making frequent scans to make sure and gather essential elements. Carbon is always a popular one because that actually charges your mining beam. If your mining beam runs out and you have no carbon to charge it, you can actually use your melee attack to gather carbon from plants. Okay, now that we've braved the wilderness and have finally made it to our ship, you can definitely see we've got a few things to check out. First and foremost, I see some oxygen I'm going to grab up. And after that, you'll see that our symbol leads us to this beacon here. There's also a lot of things to pick up, so make sure and check out all that you can before you move to your ship. And there she is. So just click on your ship and you'll notice that right away your hazard protection is not needed. So if you're in poor health, make sure and hop in your ship. This will protect you from any adverse weather. Now unfortunately we can't just take off right now because there are two repairs that have to be made. The pulse engine needs a hermetic seal and metal plating. And as far as the launch thruster goes, we've got the dihydrogen jelly, but we need 50 pure ferrite. So 
The question is, when you're brand new, where do you get pure ferrite from? Because up to this point, we've only seen ferrite dust. So this is an excellent opportunity to dive into our catalog here. We're going to select raw materials and then find pure ferrite. Upon reading about this, you can see that it's refined using ferrite dust. Well, which begs the question, where are we going to get a refiner? Well, and the answer to that is inside another menu, the build menu. So the build menu is just simply pressing up on the D-pad on console or Z with keyboard. And don't worry, you're not going to have any problems finding this because it's the only thing you can build right now. So it looks like the only thing that's stopping us is one metal plating. So if we go into our craft menu, you can see that we do have the blueprint for metal plating, which is 50 ferrite dust. Simple enough. So once we make the metal plating, we're now free to build our refiner. So for the portable refiner, we will need to provide fuel in the form of either carbon or condensed carbon. So once we have it fueled up, we can then drop whatever we please on the left side, which is the input, and we'll get a sneak preview of what will be refined on the right side, the output. So we'll take our ferrite dust, we'll drop it in, and we can see that while we don't have enough, we can at least see that pure ferrite is the result. So that's good. Now we just need to collect ferrite dust. If you look closely at the input, you'll see there's a ratio there. The ratio represents the input to output. In this case, you can see that it's a one to one ratio, meaning for every ferrite dust you put in, you'll get that much pure ferrite out. Alright, now that we have our pure ferrite, we'll find our launch thruster, click on it, and now we're able to apply our pure ferrite to get it fixed. So now we're halfway home, we've got the launch thruster fixed, and as far as the pulse engine goes, we've got the metal plating, now we're short a hermetic seal. This is where it can get just a little frustrating because you don't have a hermetic seal blueprint and you don't really know what to do. So. Remember my earlier point, if we look in the bottom right hand corner, we can clearly see that it's telling us to get back in our ship and check diagnostics, so that's what we need to do. So I do want to make this more of a guide than a playthrough, so I'm just going to fast forward through this part. But as we look at the fast forward footage here, you'll see that it directs us to the beacon. The beacon gives us a planetary chart that we activate, and once we get that, it actually gives us a new waypoint to follow. And as we get close to the waypoint, there's a cave right next to it. So let me clue you into something. Caves are awesome. Not only can you hide from storms that really eat away at your hazard protection, you can also find a lot of valuable things in here to sell and refine, namely cobalt. Cobalt is used for ion batteries, or you could also collect a bunch and sell it once you get to a space station, which is in the next episode. Just try to be a little careful because caves generally will have hazardous flora. Now it does take a while for them to kill you, so it's best just to get rid of them with your mining laser as soon as you can, and you'll get a little oxygen to spare. So after you get your hermetic seal, you'll make your way back to the ship, and as you can see, we have our trusty refiner waiting for us. So we're going to go ahead and throw in our cave marrow to make some sodium for hazard protection. All right, now that we have our hermetic seal in place, we can get that pulse engine fixed. And that, my friends, is a fully operational starship. From here, we're now free to take off. Oh yeah, this beats walking, guys. So that does it for this episode one of No Man's Sky Space Camp for Beginners. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned a lot. And I look forward to bringing you more information in the second one. And we're going to pick up right where we left off from getting out of the atmosphere and into space. This is Taylor with Whiskey Barrel Gaming, signing off.